Good happy Monday morning. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. It is December 17, 2018. Let's begin. First up, we begin with the weather. Winter mix makes Monday morning commute slick. Let's go to meteorologist Haley LaPointe with your weather forecast. Hi everybody, I'm meteorologist Haley LaPointe. Here's an update on your forecast. We have a messy mix coming through during the overnight hours tonight, and it's highly localized as to what type of wintry mix you see. Most of us will eventually see snow, but it may start out as sleet and rain first. The most snow will fall in the higher terrain, probably in a line from, say, the Monadnock region, up into the Sunapee zone, Concord, and then just into the southern part of the Lakes region. Slick, sloppy morning roads, even in southeastern New Hampshire, likely as we do change rain and sleet over to snow finally by the morning commute in southeastern New Hampshire. So here we go, all of this messy mix coming out of southern New England and moving up toward us, already starting to see some light snow and mixing in the southwestern part of the state, and eventually this heavy rain continues to push up into southern New Hampshire. So I think by about 10 o'clock tonight, it's going to pour Manchester, Portsmouth, Nashua, but it is in the form of rain at that time. But then you start to see it is snow in places Places like Rochester, Concord, out toward Jaffrey and Keene. That's where we get the most snow consistently through the overnight. So that's where we'll have the heaviest snow accumulations, about two to five inches there from, say, Laconia to Rochester, Concord, down into Jaffrey. Keene, probably a little bit less. You might mix a bit there with some sleet, and that could limit the accumulation. Same thing in Rockingham County. Lesser amounts there because of the mix that will happen. That will limit the amount of snow. Here's 5 a.m. on Monday morning. Maybe you're an early riser and you commute to work early at this time. It looks like most of us, with the exception of far northern reaches of the state, have snow coming down. Those of you in the north, you just have to wait a little while. The snow comes for you, actually, later in the day. By 7 a.m., central southern areas, this storm system wrapping up. But the damage already done. The roads will probably be a little sloppy at that time. And some more snow showers start to blossom, especially in the North Country. I think by noontime, we start to see the skies, the clouds breaking apart, the, scars, the skies brightening up by the afternoon. But there you go, up in the northern part of the state, the snow getting going up there. And that's when we'll do our accumulating between one to three inches there. By Tuesday morning, all of the snow should wrap up, but it's going to be cold again by Tuesday. So here's our snowfall forecast. This is tonight through Monday. But again, in the northern reaches of the state, the accumulation happens through Tuesday morning, one to three inches there, two to five inches in a line from, say, the Lake Winnipesaukee area through Laconia, Concord, and just to the east of Keene and the higher elevations of the Monadnock region. One to three for Manchester, Nashua, and toward Portsmouth. Basically nothing right at the immediate coast. This is morning snow tomorrow, at least away from the mountains. We'll actually see some sun in the afternoon. Windy and cold on Tuesday with highs in the 20s. Partly sunny Wednesday and into Thursday. Then on Friday, tracking much warmer temperatures back into the 40s with heavy rain for the first official day of winter. The showers linger early next weekend. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And now let's take a look at your traffic and see what your traffic looks like for this Monday morning commute. And here's a look at that traffic for all of you this morning. We're seeing a lot of green roadways, and we have a few yellow spots and a few red spots all over here and down here as well. Otherwise, this whole side here looks all green, but this whole side 
yellow and red and green roadways. Take it easy wherever you go today and you'll get to your destinations eventually. And now let's take a look at your news. Father, New Hampshire father, grateful his son will be okay after ejecting from plane. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9, Siobhan Lopez. A terrifying moment caught on camera. A pilot ejects out of a 1950s era fighter jet as it plummets toward the ocean off Oahu. It's the only time he's ever ejected and he's got over 4,000 hours. Don't want to do it again either. Yeah. <laughs> Bob Pothier of Warner is the pilot's father. His son Matt, a retired Navy pilot, is now a civilian contractor living in Hawaii with his wife and two daughters. His claim just wouldn't respond. Nobody knows what happened, for sure. I'm just looking down at the water, and I see all kinds of boats, and realize uh, the airplane's not going to make it. Pothier, a retired Navy pilot himself, says Matt expertly maneuvered the aircraft, avoiding boats and parasails, ejecting, then landing in the water with his parachute. It can fill with water and pull people. They drown, even though they made it safely to the out of the airplane. A young man jumped in the water and helped to untangle Matt and wait with him until the Coast Guard arrived. He actually came and visited uh, Matt yesterday. So they're going to be lifelong friends, I think. Matt had surgery to repair fractures in his spine. It was difficult for Pothier to be so far away, but says he knew Matt was in good hands. Because his wife is the most incredibly strong woman that I've ever known. Jesus. She's had to deal with him going to Iraq five times, Afghanistan, Somalia. Doctors think Matt will be back up in the air in just a few months. I'm just happy to be here, looking forward to, you know, flying again, looking forward to surfing again. So this is not a sad news, it's happy news, because he's alive and he's going to be fine. Pothier is looking forward to seeing Matt and the girls as he heads out to Hawaii next month. Reporting in Warner, Siobhan Lopez, WMUR News. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. After several rescues, Fish and Game warns residents of thin ice. Let's listen to the video from WMUR News 9, Tim Callery. The signs are posted at Lake Mesabesic in Manchester, warning of the dangers that sit on the water. Thin ice has created some problems for people looking to enjoy the outdoors. We've been getting reports of people going through the ice. This was the scene in Hollis yesterday after a man fell through the ice on Flint Pond. Authorities say he was in the water for about 15 minutes before he was rescued. The man was sent to the hospital and was treated for hypothermia but will be okay. Similar situations have been playing out throughout the southern end of the state. General rule of thumb is that four to six inches of bluish black ice is safe for a few well dispersed people. If it's eight to ten inches of solid ice, then it's good for OHRV activity. And stay out of areas where there's a current or an inlet or outlet. And if you happen to fall through, there are ways you can help yourself. What you want to do is 
grab onto the ice, we recommend having ice picks uh, that you can just latch onto the ice with. Lay flat out and kick your feet as hard as you can, and then in doing so, you'll actually be able to get up over the ice. Ice rescues are not only a dangerous situation for those who find themselves stuck, but they can also cause problems for people looking to help. What we recommend is that you crawl out to them to safety. That way you can also access some of the large stick or rope or anything like that that they can latch onto. And now some cases have actually involved dogs getting stuck out on the ice. Fish and Game says if your pet does find themselves trapped out there, do not go out after them. They say your best bet is just to call 911 for help. Reporting live here in Auburn, I'm Tim Callery, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Community decorations rallies around Big Ugly Chair. Let's take a listen to the video from WNE1E's 9, Mike Cronin. Drive through the center of Newton and you can't miss it. Nobody wanted the big ugly chair. The big ugly chair is Melissa Howard's. Oh, we got some Hanukkah, we got some poinsettias, some garland. Before it was merry and bright, Howard left it on her front lawn three months ago, hoping it'd find a new home. It just kind of ended up sitting out here and I forgot about it because of other stuff going on. Someone had enough and turned to Facebook to vent. She asked me, please, we're done looking at it. Get rid of the chair, take it to the dump. The Howards had another idea. A week ago, their stuffed Rudolph onesie took a seat, and then Newton took it from there. The town went crazy. They just wanted to decorate the chair. Every night, something new is added, and not just Christmas decorations. We got the book. Uh, someone was nice and put a Bud Light in there. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Oh, yeah. We got the Red Sox World Series hat going on. The negative Facebook That's post where brought where people together. Hair, and Howard so. says even the woman who complained now finds this funny. I stay in my kitchen window and I catch people driving by. And some do shake their heads, whatever, but there's more people that just stop and smile and laugh. And that's what I want all of this to be about. Just something to laugh, smile, and have fun with. But don't expect to see the big, ugly chair next year. The chair will go to the dump. I am not keeping the chair. As much as they all want me to keep the chair, I am not keeping the chair. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Very cool indeed. Salem Boys and Girls Club holds holiday open house. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9. Well, the Boys and Girls Club of Greater Salem was turned into a winter wonderland today. The club welcomed its members, Salem residents, and foster families from New Hampshire for their annual holiday open house. About a thousand people turned out to enjoy crafts and games, decorate gingerbread men, and they even had a chance to meet with Santa, as you see there. The Boys and Girls Club has teamed up with Canopy Lake Park to put on this event for the past five years. Today is just our way of giving back to everything that uh, the club is about and what Canopy brings to the Greater Salem community. We get to rent the entire Boys and Girls Club, bring everything we've got down here, uh, and be able to really give back to the community during the holidays. Canopy Lake and the Boys and Girls Club say they plan to continue this tradition next year. That would be a lot of fun. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Looks like a fun time there.
pre-market, U.S. futures point to a slightly negative open after Friday's big losses. Dow Joe Industrial Average features pointed to a slightly negative start for Monday's open after all three major U.S. indexes closed in correction territory for the first time since March 2016 in a prior trading session. Republicans trending cautiously on Trump's potential legal trouble. A number of Republicans on Capitol Hill are trending cautiously in wake of Michael Cohen's allegations that President Trump directed him to arrange hush money payments with two women because, according to Cohen, then-candidate Trump was very concerned about how this would affect the election if their allegations of affairs became public. And that does it for the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you back here later on today for another newscast. And I'll have a news report coming up in a little bit. Goodbye, everyone.